Well, hello there, children. Please, come gather round, you pretty maidens and gentlemen, to listen to this tale we're about to believe. Please relax and enjoy this time with us this evening. Uh, Aegis, this one definitely isn't for the kids or for the maidens, and if we're going to be entirely honest, it may even leave the gentlemen a bit uncomfortable. Uh, and did you mention relaxing and enjoyment? Oh boy. All right. Welcome to our review and breakdown of the song Under the Ice by Blind Guardian. As you can probably tell, Aegis has never heard it. Now, Aegis, before we get going, I'm going to give you a bit of a personal warning. We try to avoid politics. We try to avoid uh, discussing things that have extremely um, controversial context on this channel. We're here for people's enjoyment. We're here to let people have a little release. I'm going to tell you Blind Guardian is not generally political, and this song is not overtly political, but a lot of its context, if we're going to talk about it, involves darker themes and themes that are almost impossible to avoid if we want to discuss it. Are you comfortable with that? Yeah, like you said, we're trying to avoid being or stepping into the woke territory or getting involved in that or politically, you know, but this is more of a political song by then that surprises me. It's not, again, it's hard to describe. And this is one of those scenarios where I think the fan base might agree with me. This isn't in and of itself um, intended to be highly political, but it is about tyrants. It is about fleeing from mistreatment and it is about in some ways the inevitability of mistreatment um you're going to understand what i mean more as the song goes on but i think it's it's more if we're going to discuss it there's almost no way to disconnect it from actual reality in this fictional universe you mean well yeah i guess that depends if you think the fall of troy was actually fictional um, <laughs> but that's that's your own choice. So guys, as we said, we are about to do Under the Ice by Blind Guardian. The song is set, and this this is complicated, Aegis, you'll see why I'm saying that in a second. It's technically set after the fall of Troy, and it follows Cassandra's story to her death. Now, oddly enough, it also follows in a very garbled way the story of the death of King Agamemnon's daughter and his hand in her death. And I'm going to tell you right now, it's very hard to break these parts apart. And I'm not 100% sure why they chose to combine the stories, although it does make for a very satisfying, if confusing, song. Okay, cool. Also, I think right. it's Ag Agamemnon. Agamemnon, yeah, I can't pronounce words. And this is going to get even worse when we start trying to do the Middle Earth songs. I'm, I'm just going to bastardize um, the names of people, and I'm sure I'm going to get in trouble for it. But it is what it is. All right, I don't want to belabor this anymore. We've done some fairly long introductions, and I think this song is more of a, it's going to stand for itself, and you're going to have its own opinion, your own opinion. And we might as well just get into it. Okay, without further ado, under the ice. So first, I just wanted to point out, did you notice how in the intro you could almost hear the sounds of ice breaking apart from under the water? Uh, I didn't quite get that. I got kind of like a, almost like a very creepy vibe by the instruments at the start. I don't know if it was supposed to do that or not. I think it's supposed to be eerie. I think it's supposed to create a sense of dread. I also think the introduction is supposed to create an odd sense of peace. Um, if you hear it again, I mean, we can restart it if you want to, so you can give it a closer listen. In the background, you can hear what sounds like ice flow almost jolting and breaking apart, but it sounds like it's being drowned out as if you're hearing it from underwater. 
Mm. Yeah, we can rewind a little bit, sure. Oh, it's only five minutes. I mean, hell, our videos are usually 40 minutes. This one can be 20. <laughs> <laughs> True. Okay, I'm going to restart it. Okay, yeah, to back up there, I did hear the, the ice, or as you're saying, the ice breaking under the water. It sounded like it was, like, really heavy synth or, like, percussion. Uh, yep. so, I guess, so what's that supposed to mean in, in context of the song? I think it is supposed to represent somebody drowning. And this is why, this, this gets into a little bit why I think Blind Guardian chose to combine the two stories of the women. Because, and unfortunately, this is slightly a spoiler, um, King Agamemnon, which Agamemnon, did drown his daughter or attempt to drown her in her story. He tried to sacrifice her to the gods for favorable winds to get to Troy. In the case of Cassandra, I don't, I don't, in, in the original story, she was not drowned. However, if you see it in the context of she's being drowned, by everything that's happening to her and eventually just the embrace of death and how it brings her peace. I think it makes sense in the context of the song to compare the two. It's effectively supposed to be showing, as you said, that eeriness, that uncertainty, that dread of death, but also the peace that can come from death. Okay. Interesting. So, so just so, uh, so Agamemnon's Nunn's daughter, there's a storyline there where he's trying to, kill his daughter to get favor, favor from the gods during, I think, the Trojan War. And yes. Cassandra is being killed for what reason? So Cassandra and this gets, we can get right into the lyrics. So it says, run until you find the answers. Time's out for our poor Cassandra. She's fairly safe inside the fire. Um, inside the fire, awakens desire is cruelly admired. Uh, and then it talks about... Would you like to see me how I'll cut off her head? Life's a game. Um, don't blame me or don't be shy. Blame me. Don't feel ashamed. Remember the oath. So there's a lot of lyrics there. And this is where things start to get very garbled. So Cassandra was murdered by King. I'm just going to call him the king, the Greek, king, <laughs> um, the Greek king's family. Um, out of jealousy, out of power grab, eventually him and her are both murdered again for something she had no control over. She was forced into marriage with him after she was sexually assaulted by a soldier of the Trojan or of the Greek army when Troy fell. So Cassandra's story gets even darker after the fall of Troy. She's assaulted, she's forced into marriage with the king, and then she's murdered for being his queen. So these lyrics are talking about, um, don't be shy, blame me. The, this section seems to be from the king himself speaking to her mm. and basically telling her, remember your oath was to be married to me till death. Right. Um, remember that, don't be ashamed of it. Um, but time is now owed for you. And that is obviously the opening lyrics of this song. Cassandra can always see the future, but she can never give the answer. She can never help. She can never change anything. And now time's up for her. She has seen the entire future up until her death, and it's here. The flip side is, at the same time, and these lyrics seem to still be coming from the king, it says, would you like to see how I'll cut off her head? Life's a game. 
that seems to be more in line with when he drowned his daughter. It seems to be more he's asking the gods, what do you want to see from me in order to get favorable winds for me to go to Troy? So, yeah, I guess it can be kind of confusing because they're kind of like garbling two stories together, it seems like, right? Right, and I think they're trying to draw that parallel between the two stories and how these women are effectively having their lives ruined and ended. Now, the king's daughter didn't die, but that, that's that's another story for another time. Um, they're effectively having their lives controlled and ruined by a man that they have no power over and through choices that they didn't get to make. Right. Interesting. So the title under the ice, do you think it's kind of like the, the, the reasoning or the, the definition of that title in the context of the song that's been like explained yet? No. Um, that actually, this is one of the times that blind guardian actually brings the title into their lyrics and that's coming up here in the chorus. Um, mm. and it, it will discuss that. Uh, and again, I still think in some ways it's, um, it's metaphor and in some ways it is literal. Yeah. Cause they don't do that that often, do they? Pardon? They don't do that that often, like putting the, the title of their, their track in the song. No, and when they do, it's usually like part of a verse or something, and you can almost miss it on the fly. Right, <laughs> um, yeah. Like in, it, they say, and then there was silence in that song, but it's just part of a, like, it's it's not even the full sentence. It's, it's part of an entirely other lyric, right? Um, in this song, it's much more center stage. It is a key point of the chorus. Right. All right. If you're ready, I'm ready to get back into it. Ready, ready. So, okay there, so Under the Ice You Will Believe, Under the Ice You Will Be Free, released from Rotten Thoughts. So, it sounds like he's talking to Cassandra there, or somebody is? Yes. Um, he, somebody definitely is, and you're right, um, this is definitely aimed at Cassandra and basically saying, embrace your own death, it will release you from your visions, it will release you from pain, and it will release you from the control of the gods, be it men who believe they're gods and in this case literal gods who've cursed her however the the issue with this lyric and i'm not honestly i've never quite figured out how to read it is it says it's time to cross the border is it true what they say about the part you've played so the part you played makes sense it's people blaming cassandra for becoming queen um people blaming her for what happened to troy because she never was able to convince the king to avoid what happened there's a lot of ways to take it However, the crossing the border part seems to imply that she's a refugee or she's trying to flee. But in, in all honesty, the king brought her to Greece. She didn't have much choice. Now, again, I guess you're still waking up and crossing the border, but it doesn't sound – it sounds like she's a refugee, not it sounds like she's being brought there by the king, right? So I, I do find that lyric hard to digest and understand. Hmm. I mean – it's time to cross the border. Uh, could be they're tr like they're crossing the border to march to Troy to, I guess, destroy Troy. Right, and that that could be another part where the lyrics are garbled and she's having mixed visions. It could even be a metaphor that it's basically saying you're no longer Trojan, you're Greek. Like yeah. you're crossing the border, you're becoming a Greek. Yep. Uh, there's a lot of ways to take it. Um, what do you think, even though I, again, I know the lyrics are very garbled, what do you think of the intention of this song so far? I don't know. I find it kind of confusing because at the one hand, I've, I've been mainly getting the view of Cassandra and either her being killed or being taken with the king, yada, yada, yada. But she, why is she being killed? 
because I guess her visions were false or like they, they didn't believe them and they should have or because she's like a, an oracle and they're like bad juju kind of thing? No, they're killing her effectively because they're trying to replace the crown. It's another uh, situation where Cassandra is, again, part of the point of the song seems to be in the day, the powerlessness of women who are trapped amongst these powerful men. She's being killed because of her marriage to a king she never wanted to marry after a war she never wanted to be involved with after a decision by her brother that had nothing to do with her. She's being murdered because other people want to take power. Right. Okay. So, so is she like collateral damage then? She's effectively collateral damage as her entire life has been. She is collateral damage. Shitty deal. Yeah. It's not great. <laughs> it, it's not great. And that that will that theme will continue throughout the entire song. Okay, uh, let's go on then. Okay, so, okay, so, uh, barren the land, it's all dead and gone. It sounds like that's talking about Troy after its destruction. Yes. And so what I'm gathering is, it seems like the paragraph after that, uh, so witness my glory, my triumph, my fame, king of terror. Is that somebody talking to the king? It's someone talking about the king, for sure. And... It's, it's interesting because I like how it starts with, please understand it's not in our hands, because this is effectively the people, in my opinion, the powerful people referring to the gods. Even though we're the ones doing this, we're destroying Troy, we're, dest we're causing wars, because, I mean, this Greek king was a tyrant. He caused many wars just to take more land. Even now, he's still saying, this is the choice of the gods. It's not fully my fault hmm okay and yet the next line describes the tyrant's face is red you should witness his glory his triumph his fame and how it's the best thing for him he enjoys it so again this this shows this is the man who's causing all the problems but he thinks cassandra should just be happy to be in his presence and going along with it. <laughs> Sounds kind of misogynistic. <laughs> yeah, and that's what I'm saying. This song, even though it's not political in nature, and it's clearly just telling a story the way it happened, a lot of people forget Troy did deal with misogyny, or sorry, the Iliad, Odyssey, those books and the stories in Troy dealt with misogyny. It dealt with power and balance at the time. It dealt with fates being dealt to people who didn't deserve them. It dealt with a lot of things that are still current and relevant, no matter what side of it you're on, right? Right. And then, of course, this is, again, where it blurs back into the past, because just stop whining, hold your breath, it won't take long, realize this is your judgment day. Is the king speaking to his own daughter as he attempts to drown her? Jeez. Yeah, I guess it's... I wonder why they bounce back and forth like that, eh? I guess because it is kind of confusing. I think it's a parallel. Again, I, I do think it's 
he was willing to literally drown his daughter and now he's drowning Cassandra and all of his choices Mm. and he's not seeing any regrets and he's not seeing any all he sees is his own glory and he doesn't see it as he's ruining people's lives for his own power might be the right word for it Mm. where it's so easy yeah so then, of course, there's a line, um, and I enjoy this. In each course, the opening line changes. The first one was, enjoy your stay here. Welcome to the slaughterhouse. And now becomes, there are no rules here. Welcome to the slaughterhouse. Um, in other words, the king welcoming her into Greece and becoming his own. And now he's saying there's no rules. Basically, I do whatever I want. Welcome <laughs> to the slaughterhouse. Do you <laughs> see what I'm saying? It's near impossible to avoid the politics of this, right? Yeah, you're right. But so do you what, like it so far? Oh, I'm loving okay, it. Really it's good. it's pretty interesting, right? Like it's the music is fun, the the chorus is great, the there's a lot of like details and story in the verses. Um It's saying here, no more pain and no more gods. Now, was Greece trying to go against the gods at some point? No. Um, I mean, in some ways they are, because the stories in the Iliad clearly show that there's gods on both sides of the conflict. There's gods that wanted Troy to fall, and there's gods that wanted Troy to stand. Um, And ultimately, it's rather interesting, because what it implies is the gods can change fate, but humans can't. But then um, Achilles comes along and literally kills gods. Uh, And I'm pretty (laughs) sure that means he somewhat altered fate, right? Yeah. But I think more what it's saying is Cassandra was cursed by the gods and be it the king or whoever's speaking to her or maybe even herself is saying, find peace in your own death. There won't be any pain after death. You won't have any more of these rotten thoughts or prophecies that you can't have any effect over and the gods will no longer be torturing you. You see, whenever I hear songs or listen to things about Troy, I always think of the movie Troy and I think of like... So is Agamemnon, is he like the big bearded guy whose brother dies fighting Eric Bana? Yes. Yeah, that's exactly who he is. He's the Greek king. So is Helen, is Helen his previous wife? No, Helen is his brother's previous wife. Ah, yeah, you're right, Dan. Yeah. No, 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 no. I mean, hey, I'm glad you're asking questions and you're thinking about it because it, it makes this more interesting. Yeah, that's... I'm surprised how much you remember. To be honest. Yeah, no, no, I, it's like it's like I watched it yesterday, but it's been it's been a long time. If only my girlfriend liked mythology and movies with swords and stuff. <laughs> Game of Thrones yeah. is basically time for her to sleep, which is sad face. <laughs> Fair enough. It's time for me to sleep as well. Come at me, Game of Thrones fans. <laughs> mm. All right, let's hit play again. Okay, yeah. So my my was muted there. That's I did. I wanted to pause it because it's gonna be a fair more run until the end of the song. But yeah, 
okay, so first thing is break the chains, time to change. Are they trying to change, like, the chains of faith and, like, change, I guess, what will be history? Well, they're going against the God King, right? So yeah. yes, in some ways they are going against what their assumed fate is meant to be. This is where this song really dives into the politics of the time for just a minute. I see this as the people who are actually about to kill Cassandra telling her, you have to be our enemy for the sake of what we want done, which is removal of the king. You cannot be allowed to live. You're not one of us you are trojan and you are officially the queen you have to die for us to get what we want um and therefore we're breaking the chains of oppression it's time for change but as part of breaking the chains of oppression we're murdering someone who was heavily oppressed yeah fuck so she's the artificial enemy so to speak in this in this case Yep, she's done nothing wrong, she's not asked for any of this, but she is the enemy of the state of Greece. Mm. So I guess by killing her, the the common folk are going to hopefully see change in the king? Is that what their goal is? Well, I mean, they're going to kill the king, so yes, they're going to to see a completely different king. They're making their own change, (laughs) I guess, shit. True. Yeah, exactly. Um, Of course, though, it does ask the question, are we ever going to learn that we can't fly on broken wings. In other words, this is the exact same as what the king's done. He murders the oppressed, he forces people out of his way, um, and he doesn't care about the impact of the on the people that he is punishing. What an interesting parallel to real life. You know, if you have a shitty president or a shitty, you know, king, prime minister, you're the, the the common folk, so to speak, will kind of begin to echo similar sentiments, right? Yes. And that's what I'm saying. It 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 parallels so much politics and so much reality that it's hard not to talk about it in this song. Um, of course, and then the closing lines. Now, of course, there is still another chorus to go, but um, I'm afraid to say you won't play a part, which is unfortunately typical of Cassandra's entire life, even though, you know, I always saw her being a prophet as being, again, sort of metaphorical. The point is she's the wisest person in the room who always knows what the impacts of what's being done is going to be, but no one ever listens to her. So even though she could have changed the world, she could have had a huge impact. Once again, she is never going to get to have that impact because they're going to kill her. (laughs) Um, And then, you know, it says the part of tyrants. It's been nice. In other words, hey, you know, been nice getting to know you, but get out of my way because now it's our turn to be in power it okay. literally says that right question so i'm looking at the the genius lyrics and there's an explanation and all throughout these explanations i've been seeing this name called clytonestra who the hell is yep. she i'm blanking on that one pretty sure uh if does it mention that she was involved in her death yeah it does yeah so she would be um i think she's the king's sister or aunt she's a direct relative of the king because the people who were involved in overthrowing him were his family okay Hmm. so so i believe yeah again i i i'm trying to avoid names because i can't pronounce them (laughs) that's what i'm saying in in this part it's clearly the people who are actually killing cassandra saying it right And, and they're effectively saying for the sake of Greece, you're going to be vilified. You're going to be the bad guy. Even if you've done nothing wrong, get out of our way. It's time for us to change history. This this tyrant has to be ended, and you're just going to be another victim. Uh, tough titties, right? <clears throat> it's a bad deal. And that, and that is why the, the, the third change opening to the chorus is so beautiful. Don't mind the blood here. Welcome to the slaughterhouse. In other words... We've made the change we wanted. Please, if you see the slaughterhouse as the throne room, please ignore the blood. <laughs> <laughs> ignore that. That's, that's red paint. Red paint. Yeah. Literal and metaphorical. Don't mind the blood. Don't mind the slaughter that's happened in the throne room. Don't mind the slaughter that's been caused because of the people in the throne room. Don't mind the wars that this throne has caused. Welcome to our kingdom. I kind of like how they change up the start of each of those, like, pre-chorus areas or preludes to the chorus. Yeah, 
Yeah, I guess it's called the bridge, right? It'd be called the, bridge, the bridge. Yeah, the I could I, I couldn't remember yeah. the word. <laughs> Thank you. I couldn't either. That's why I kept calling it the intro to the course. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Um, what do you think? I mean, we are, uh, we're basically at the end. Obviously, we're going to listen through to the end of the song. But what do you think of the context of this in women in society, the powerful in society, and even the people who want to overthrow the power in society and their and their mentality? What what do you think of how the song comments on all that without directly saying that's what we're talking about? It kind of leads us to believe that if enough people don't like a leader or like a dictator or whatever, they will take action to their own hands. And I guess that's a way for them to reclaim power. You know, instead of being like instead of being disempowered for so long, they want to try and take back their lives and you know control of them. But at the same time, they wind up punishing people who are just victims themselves. Yeah, like in this case, like Cassandra is his wife, and she's going to get killed because the king has to be killed. Uh, so it also maybe sheds some dark light on what people are capable of and more, brings into question morality in this kind of situation, or if there is any. Yeah, and no one comes to power without shedding of literal or metaphorical blood there's always someone being taken out for someone else to take power, right? Yeah, that's a good point. So, all right, let's wrap this up. Uh, I Again, there is still a little smidgen that will be added on to the last chorus here because they always add a nice little touch to their endings, but uh, let's play. Okie dokie. So, this is kind of funny, because it doesn't actually say it in the lyrics, but I think in the remaster, and this is part of why I wanted the remaster to be what we played, you can clearly hear in the background, they say, no more gods, no more gods, but at the same time, they're saying Agamemnon. Agamemnon. Ah, I'm going to rewind so it so I can hear it, actually. One second. It's drawing, yeah, absolutely, but they're drawing the parallel between, even though they're telling her no more gods to torture you, they're also talking about tyrant kings and how they effectively play god. And the people are tearing down the god, the false god. So maybe in a way they're trying to free her from him. I mean, it's kind of messed up because they're killing her, but they're freeing her of the pain of being with this shitty king Agamemnon. Exactly. So now you're starting to see why I'm saying I think this entire song is garble, but it also is intentionally drawing about a dozen different parallels. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they're very complicated <laughs> to understand, but I think they're there. All right, you can hit play on it. Oh, you gotta go back. There. I thought, I think I heard it there, you're right. They said Agamemnon twice. They said it quietly, and then they screamed it. Like they, He says it quietly in the background, and then he screams it as an extension of the word gods. That's kind of funny. And the funny so, thing is, so many people miss it. It's not even listed in the the genius court, the genius lyrics. Yeah, I completely missed it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was cool. Um, I'm glad you pointed that out because I guess it is relating how tyrant kings can believe them to be of attaining godhood and complete power over whatever land they rule, and enough to challenge the gods. I think. And I do, I do like that the song ends with a peaceful note because I still think this is supposed to represent Cassandra's death. And I do like how it, even if it's just for a brief second, there's peace at the end of the song. I do like that it gives that little dose of not hopefulness, but maybe light. Yeah, it's kind of like under the ice, you're dying. Apparently they say like, did, is this wrong? Drowning apparently is a peaceful way to die. It is. So maybe it's um, kind of like drowning. a... Sorry. No, I'll say it's 
sounds like it's like a more of like a peaceful way for for Cassandra to be done, assuming she's being killed by drowning. Well, and that's the thing. They might be taking liberty of saying that she was drowned literally. I don't think the story about Troy ever actually said how they killed her. Um, yeah. But yeah, yeah, I still think that it more draws the parallel of the literal his daughter drowning and her drowning and what he's done. But yes, um, drowning and it does tie into the song and even the song of Troy where and, and then there was silence. You hear Cassandra's panic throughout the entire song. And then when it gets to the part where it's like, come join us in our singing and our dancing, it's her saying it. And it's almost like she's embraced that Troy's going to fall and she's just going along with the celebration of the Trojan horse, even though she knows it's tragic, she's just accepted what's about to happen. So she's enjoying her last, what she thinks at the time are her last moments. Um, so here's that, the question. Why did they focus on Cassandra for these last couple of songs? Like what's so important about her from their perspective? I don't know. I, I, I would say that they focus on tragic figures a lot in their songs. Um, I mean, I've told you guys, you won't have heard it yet, but I've told a, just my theories about how beyond the red mirror works um, and ends. <laughs> um, I think blind guardian likes to deal with how people, and I guess mythological figures in some cases, if we eventually get to certain songs, you'll see real life figures respond to eminent death and respond to eminent danger and you're right i mean you mentioned it last time that it might be they want to put a bit of their own opinions behind these things so it gives them a way to have an outlet to discuss those things without being an outwardly political band right right because they're not or they don't appear to be like really political it's no, more like i guess ta tasteful yeah and i mean this this song is i I believe the original song is almost 15 years old. This song isn't based on our modern politics. It's just ageless. Right. And they're right. German. So like all of us are putting our North American politics into this and they're, they're German. Right. Oh, so, they're German. Are they interesting? I didn't know that. Yeah, it's funny. All their songs are in English, but uh, <laughs> um, so it's, I don't know. I personally like that they chose to focus on Cassandra because I do think it gives that tragic sense of doom and that tragic sense of fate that was tied into the story of Troy so much, right? Right. Hmm. Okay. okay. Overall cool. impression? Uh, I'll give that a listen to later on today when I inevitably go down to work out. This is a... Uh, the music is so fun to just run to. I don't know if you run, but it's fun to run to. I work out, and I do listen to these guys, Slipknot, and other metal bands when I'm working out. Yep. Yeah. Metal music is just, it's good to work out, too. Absolutely. All right, so I guess that means you have a positive impression, and you're willing to listen to a few more songs by them? At least one more song. At least one more, and you're giving the hint here. Guys, we're about to record back-to-back. -back. You're going to hear it as one video, or two videos. We're doing it as one video. <laughs> we're about to do Time Stand Still at the Iron Hill because Aegis's obsession with extremely nerdy things has led us down a dark path. Yep. <laughs> All right, everyone. Have a good night. Later.